All the earth shall bow down before you, O God, and shall sing to you, shall sing to your name, O Most High. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am. Samuel ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you have called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel, Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you have called me. But he said, I did not call, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you have called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place, for the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. The response is, Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise for our God. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, but you have given me an open ear. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Then I said, Here I am. 
In the scroll of the book it is written of me, I delight to do your will, O my God. Your law is written within my heart. Response. Here, Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. See, I have not restrained my lips, as you know, O Lord. Here, Here I, I am, Lord. Lord. I, I come, come to do your will. will. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the body is not meant for fornication for the Lord, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will raise us by his power. Do you not know that our bodies are members of Christ? But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. John was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In these days, I think all of us sense the irony in the fact that today we celebrate what is called the second Sunday in ordinary time. It hardly feels like ordinary time. And in case you're wondering, wait, where'd the first Sunday in Ordinary Time go? That was really not really something we celebrated because we had the baptism of the Lord last Sunday. So this is our first Sunday in Ordinary Time, which, as I said, does not really feel so ordinary. Increased economic, health, political, financial problems and difficulties in families and relationships sadly seem more ordinary than they used to be because of this difficult pandemic that we all find ourselves affected by. And a pandemic is also not an ordinary time. It's pretty unprecedented in many ways. Nor are lockdowns, churches not being opened as much, requests by government officials not to leave your home or to go really anywhere most of the time unless it's essential. These are far from ordinary times. And all of us uh, see this, and this all uh, gives us a chance to reflect on how ordinary time itself in the church's calendar 
and how our readings today are ways that God is speaking to us in our extraordinary times. Let me begin by explaining what ordinary time in the church actually means. And then I just want to go on to explore with you today to share how God is speaking to us today through ordinary time and through today's readings in these extraordinary times. I know it comes as merely a reminder for many of you, but ordinary time doesn't mean ordinary in how we usually tend to use that word. Actually, ordinary time in the church's calendar really actually comes from the term ordinal, ordinal time. The word ordinal means numerical or a position in a series. And so think of ordinary time as a grace-filled season in the church where we are exploring one after the other all the different parts of Jesus' ministry, meditating on what it means for our lives every Sunday. And ordinary time isn't meant to be ordinary in the ordinary sense of the word. It's actually meant to be a consistent time of extraordinarily deeply experiencing God, the whole breadth of his beautiful life and teachings, his miracles, his parables, and letting them sink into our lives. On top of that, the color green that we use for ordinary time is a symbol of growth. Think of green grass, growth, life, health. This is what is meant to be taking place in ordinary time. We should be growing in our spiritual life, deepening every week with the Lord, meditating on every part which we do, one after the other, throughout ordinal, ordinary time. So notice that ordinary time should not be ordinary. It should be a time of extraordinary grace if we open our hearts. All this is, mean, all this is to mean that although our times in our world are extraordinary, so is the grace that God is giving us. So is God's word when we open our hearts to his presence in our lives. And he is speaking to us in our prayer. He speaks to us in our lives. He speaks to us personally. He knows you. He knows your heart. He cares for you so, so much. He died on the cross for you. Not just you, plural. You, singular. You. And he loves you. And he is with you in these extraordinary times with extraordinary grace. And that's an ordinary reality because it's ordinary that he is extraordinarily loving us. Because he never gives up. He never surrenders his desire to bless us and to grace us in our life. And so, the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, reconciliation, holy communion, holy matrimony, these are all ordinarily extraordinary powerful ways that we experience the Lord's grace in our lives. And we can ask him to unleash the power of those sacraments in our life. Unleash the power of my baptism, Lord. Unleash the power of my confirmation, the graces that are there. And that should be an ordinary thing that we do to receive that life, that light, that peace of God. And so that's just a little reminder of what we should think about in ordinary time. Throughout all of it, there are 34 weeks of ordinary time. And there's a break for a while in the middle when we hit some other seasons. Now, we are always able to plug into this extraordinary grace of ordinary time where extraordinary growth is ordinary, if we're open. We remember that God is always on the move, even in the seemingly ordinary things of our lives. If our eyes are open, we can see God's hand. We can see him working, giving us little signs of his presence, giving us signs that he is with us. He will not leave us orphaned. He will not abandon you. He knows the struggles. He knows the burdens. When has anyone in the Gospels come to Jesus and not been left cared for? Never. He will not abandon you. And that's ordinary when you're with Jesus. Now, moving to today's readings, I want to reflect on one particular part in a special way, and I want to lead into that by sharing a little story. At the seminary of St. Augustine's in Toronto, where Father Bergsma and I both studied as we prepared to become priests, 
I was taught by my spiritual director at the time to pray for 30 minutes a day with the scriptures of the day, especially focusing on the gospel. And just a note here that we, we can't underestimate the power of reading God's holy word consistently, even if it's only for short periods of time every day. Consistency is more important than volume. I really can't encourage you enough to read the Bible and to pray from the depths of your heart every day to encounter the Lord who is there. Maybe he's so ordinarily there that we forget how extraordinary that is. This personal relationship with Jesus should be ordinary for each of us every day. And the blessings that will come will be extraordinary, great, and we will start to see that the extraordinary presence of our God in our life just becomes ordinary in a certain sense, that we're always just walking with God. And that happens when we pray. So my spiritual director taught me to open my prayer, this time of prayer every day, saying the words that we heard from Samuel in the first reading today. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And this phrase has become sort of an archetype or a, a model of the way that we are meant to be when we pray with our loving God. Every single word of this phrase has great meaning. Speak. We mean that we know that God does speak to us. We want to hear the voice of God in our lives. Speak, Lord. Lord. We acknowledge him as the Lord of our life who is to be at the center of everything we do. Is Jesus the Lord of my life? Is Jesus the Lord of your life in the way you use your time, in the way you use your technology, with your friends, with your family, how you treat your wife or husband? Is Jesus the Lord of your life in how you treat your children, in how you respect and honor your parents, living out that great commandment of God? Is Jesus the center of your life and how you live out all of the Ten Commandments and all the commandments of Jesus and with what you do with your body, as we heard in the second reading from St. Paul today? With what you watch. Is Jesus the center, the Lord of your life, over what you watch, what you listen to, how you spend your time? Because if he's not, you're missing out. Sin does not satisfy. It leaves you empty. It leaves you feeling dry. Jesus does satisfy, extraordinarily so. And that is just the ordinary reality for Christians who have given their life to him. So speak, Lord, is so rich already. He should be the reason for what we do because St. Paul says elsewhere, whatever you do, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who loves you, who cares for you. His mercy, his love are so limitless. It's the backdrop for all that we say and do. Speak, Lord, your servant, your. This means that we are acknowledging that we belong to God. We are his. I am your servant. I am yours, God. Again, this is what the second reading refers to us when it says that our bodies belong to God. We are yours. The apostles today, they want to become Jesus, his disciples. They want to know him, they want to love him, they want to follow him, they want to be his hands and feet when he is no longer present in the same way. They are his. We are his. Speak, Lord, your servant. Using the word servant, we mean that we delight in putting ourselves in the service of God, the God who is love, the God who says, learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. Come and find rest for yourselves. My yoke is easy, my burden light. Who says, love one another as I have loved you. Who knew loved us to the end on the cross. We were made to love and be loved, and so to serve him, to be his servant is a source of joy and a source of peace. Because following him, the Bible is the roadmap to peace. Even if the world tries to convince us otherwise, it cannot, because we have tasted and seen that the Lord is good, that he does not disappoint us. So we know that we are his servants. Speak, Lord, your servant. That is what we should mean when we pray. We should come with this attitude of heart. Jesus said, the Son of Man has come not to be served, but to serve. We are called to serve him and to serve others. He says, 
the Son of Man not only has come to serve, but that we are called to serve others, as he teaches at the Last Supper when he washes the feet of the apostles. Do we wash the feet of others? Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Do we serve the Lord by obeying him? So much richness in these words. It's beautiful. It's profound. We need to know that we can trust in the Lord, in his deep love for us, because he wants to serve us first. He has loved us first. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Is. We're here in the present moment, right now, with Jesus. Right where you are, as you watch this, he's right with you. He loves you. He's so glad you're here. So are we. Because now is the moment when he wants to speak to us. And now is any time we come to pray. We listen to him speak tenderly and lovingly to us in our lives. And the last word, listening. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. We don't just hear God in a sense. We hear him, but we need to go deeper. We need to listen. We need to ponder. We need to reflect. So much of the lessons that are going to come at us Sunday after Sunday through ordinary time, basically you have a choice. We all have a choice. Am I going to kind of hear that and let it go one ear out the other? Am I going to hear it, but is it going to stop in my brain, in my mind, in my prayer? Am I going to reflect and listen, listen to the Lord speaking in my life? Lord, what are you trying to say to me now? And then to pause in silence and listen. The Lord speaks to us in silence. If we don't create times of silence, we will not listen. We will not hear. We will miss out on what our loving God wants to speak to us. And that will be a tragedy. Ordinary time, extraordinary grace. Every time, if you listen, will you listen? This is so rich. This is so profound. Just in these words, just a small slice of today's readings, when we listened to it, we learned so much. That's true for all of the Bible. And so we want to ponder in our hearts, just like our Blessed Mother did, all the ways that God was working in the events of her life and through them and to her as she listened in her heart. This is what our prayer should be like every day as we find ourselves in this extraordinarily difficult time. Don't you and I need extraordinary grace to sustain us and give us peace, give us guidance and wisdom in our life? That's why we need every day, just like I was taught at the seminary, to come and pray with the Lord in the, in the Bible and say, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. And mean it as best we can. This is why the apostles could so quickly recognize Jesus as the Messiah in today's gospel, because they are, their hearts, without being perfect, fundamentally they were open. They were men of goodwill, seeking the truth, wanting what was right. And he satisfied their hearts, because they let him. They listened. And then it made them spontaneously want to share Jesus with others, because of what they experienced. This is what has happened for me who, as you know, used to be practically an atheist. And I can say it took a long time for me to listen. <laughs> but thanks be to God, His grace broke through in my life. And I pray that it does for you. I pray that you will listen. Because God also has a great plan for you. Beautiful things in store for you. Though broken and imperfect, we also are able to surrender our lives to Jesus. To experience His extraordinary peace, His extraordinary love which is ordinary when we come to him every day, which should be ordinary for everyone and will be ordinary for us when we get to heaven. And that's why we are called every day on the road to heaven to give our whole selves to God, who gives his whole self to us in the sacraments, especially at every Mass and Holy Communion. And so we say to him, Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. Just as you can come to him during adoration, we have exposition of the Blessed Sacrament here every day of the week, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. every day. Come and be with him. And so we say, Lord, in these extraordinary times, from our hearts, we want to grow in our relationship with you. We want that to be the ordinary way that we go through life from now on for each of us every day. And so we echo in our heart the words of Samuel, who would become one of the great figures of the Old Testament because he listened to God. 
Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Let us profess our faith together in the words that the Church has given us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And with great confidence in our loving God, who tenderly cares for us and hears all of our petitions and prayers, we bring to him now all of our needs. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of the church may continue to spread God's word with joy to the people of the world, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the governments of all nations seek just and peaceful solutions to conflict, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of Angeline Tella, Nora Gleason, and all intentions and the intentions of all parishioners, and thanksgiving to God the Father, whom the Mass is offered for, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. That those who suffer from oppression or violence may draw strength from the suffering of Jesus and have the support of caring people, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That Scripture's teaching that our lives and bodies belong to the Lord may increase our reverence for all human life and our awareness that only God can give or take it away. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and hospitalized, may they feel the healing power of Christ and find comfort and hope in his constant, constant presence. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may rest in the peace of the heavenly kingdom. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and loving Father, through whom all good things come, we give you thanks and praise for the fact that you are always there for us, and that you love us, and we ask that you grant all of these prayers, all that you know that we need, and all that we hold in our hearts, because we ask you with confidence in your love, and in the holy name of Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Douglas, our Bishop, Wayne, his auxiliary, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. We have come to know and to believe in the love that God has for us. Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread one in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Just want to say again that Father Bergsma and I are praying for you every day. And of course, feel free to reach out if there's any way we can serve you. Again, as I mentioned in our homily, today we have the exposition of the Blessed Sacrament, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. That's every day, seven days a week. Come and visit the Lord Jesus. Speak. He is desiring to speak to you. And he has a deep desire to console you and to guide you and to bless you in these times as you come close to him. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.